All right, so for the second episode of Behind the Build with Drift HQ, we have Dean Carney in town with his twin turbo V10 Viper. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for having us here. Of course. Now, uh, not on the best circumstances. Do you want to give a little explanation of why your car's been in the shop the past couple of days? Yeah, we've been here for the last uh, four days. Thank you very much for opening up your shop to us. We had a hurt motor coming through FD Orlando and we we're just able to limp it all the way through. We had a camshaft start to come apart and Frank was also walking forward that smote the bus washers. So we were just barely able to get it through. I was almost glad that we didn't go any harder in the competition because I think we would have scattered the motor all over the track. So this thing is wild. I, is it fair to say this probably makes the most power in FD? Uh, it definitely makes the most power in FD as up till a couple of years ago. Um, as far as we know, it was the most powerful drift car in the world. And how much power is that? Uh, we've made 1800 on it, um, but we typically run it in the window of 1000 to 1300, like all depending on the track. That's so wild. These motors, like, is this a stroke or is it stock displacement? No, no, it's stock displacement motor. And yeah. How much is that? Uh, is that 8.3 or for the Americans, 505. 8.3 liters. That's crazy. Yeah. Twin turbo. Does it make a lot of torque or is it more of like a peaky it power? It makes band? the exact same power and torque all the way through. This thing's so wild. It's crazy, yeah. So I want to know the story, why a Viper? I know, I think you should grab a chair because it's going to take a moment. Really? All right, <laughs> uh, give, me, give me the short. So when I was seven years old, I was on vacation with my family in Spain, coming back um, to the airport in Dublin. I was asleep on the back seat of my mom's arms. And my dad st hopped in the middle of the road at a dealership. And there was a red generation two in a dealership up on a turntable at four o'clock in the morning. All up, we're looking in the window like this. And I was just in love with him ever since. So why not drift him, right? Uh, yeah, and then I was <laughs> fortunate enough to uh, to get a call off Samuel Hubenet, who ran the factory Dodge team in 2010. And uh, they had a seat open for 11 and 12, and I drove the car for him. And then our flat then, I was just hooked on him, right? It's a beautiful car, but like the biggest thing that I, I think when I look at it is weight distribution. Is it optimal for drifting? Did you need to do a lot of stuff moving it around? Yeah, we had to move around a lot. So uh, these chassis were predominantly built um, for track racing, like for time right. attack and that kind of stuff. Um, so they were like, everything was planned out like as a race car and then making a straight car afterwards was like an afterthought. Um, so we had to move around some stuff that's more predominant like in the drifting world than, mm -hmm. than Harker Racing. And what is your weight balance front to rear? Uh, we're 51.2, 48.8. Interesting. I've been talking to a lot of the teams lately, just like out of curiosity, seeing where weight distribution is. And it seems like generally most people are either 50-50 or a little bit biased to the rear. So I think uh, FD predominantly is more biased actually towards the rear because we all have massive tires and making mm. crazy horsepower. I, I traditionally prefer driving a car that's like even 51 on the front. I think they actually drive nicer. And uh, you don't have this like lag, like coming off of mm -hmm. full lock on the way back, you know? My thought is like on the smaller tracks, having the little bit more front heavy, the car's quicker to transition. But I guess on like the bigger bank tracks like Irwindale, having a little bit of weight over the yeah. rear probably helps you be a little faster. Yeah. Uh, can we pop the hood on it? Of course we can. So the only thing that I know about these engines is because Let's Dad has the truck that has one of these. Do I just pull harder? Yeah, just pull harder. It's a drift car, right? All right. <laughs> Jeez, dude. The packaging on this is actually pretty impressive for how much there is going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. It's more like a power station than an engine, right? <laughs> so two Garrett's, what uh, what size servos? At uh, 3582 Gen 2s. And is all like the hot piping stuff, is it custom or is it stuff that you would buy if you had like a Viper street car? It is all custom. There's there's nothing on this car. It's factory except the tunnel. Um, and then obviously the stuff in FD that we can't modify, like the shock towers or whatever, but absolutely everything else is ours. Front suspension, custom? Yep, we designed this. I, I started developing it in 2015 and then it was so expensive, like like had stuff and fucking everything back then was crazy expensive and I just ran out of money. So it took me three years to actually take actually from concept to taking the parts and then first actually test them then, you know? Now, do, is there anyone else that's running a Viper drift car out there? As far as I know, no one I know. No, we're definitely the only car in the US. I heard rumors there was a car in Russia. Would it be cost effective? I mean, despite the price of the car, but like Vipers are getting cheap enough now. Could you build a version of this on like a basic like stock engine, stock drivetrain setup? And would it be fun to drive? So I have a practice car, uh -huh. um, which is completely stock motor, ECU, everything front mounted rad. T 
T56 and just a two-way differential in it. The cars are actually creeping up in price at the moment. Like even a convertible Gen 3 car now is uh, north of 55 to 60 grand at the moment. What about Gen 2s? Are those no good? I personally have no love for them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't actually fit in them, so it's probably the same as well. You know, the windshield is here, so. All right, you got twin Garrett's. You got the best turbos. What about your bottom end? Is it built? Yep. Um, it's all, uh, we use Hello Rods, uh, Halley's Crank, AP Pistons, ARP, head sides and everything else. Dry sump? Yep. Now, how similar would this be to like one of those big power straight line Vipers, like in terms of engine package? Um, the engine package is similar in many ways, but then it's obviously got our own kind of a twist on like in drifting. We actually run in this car like a factory camshaft. Interesting. Um, because a lot of the cars, they don't see any amount of heat because yeah. they have so much airflow with them. Um, and we ran aftermarket cams in this before, and we found a... It was actually the block gets hot, like it actually starts to twist and the camshaft sits in the block. That's no fun. Looking at your packaging, it looks pretty cool. Not too much going on up there. So what do you have mounted in the rear? Uh, what we have in the rear is typical pro FD stuff, right? I'll get the, I'll get the stay. So radiator fuel cell, battery and nitrous. Basically enough to make a bomb. It looks very, like, very organized. I really like how you've kind of tidied everything up. I'm, uh, I'm super OCD on packaging and stuff when it comes to cars and probably have spent way too long in this car by moving things at a couple of millimeters and stuff. But Does the engine stay pretty cool? Uh, yeah, for the most part. Like after after two laps of FD, we'll be looking at 205. That's not bad at all. Water temp, yeah. So Especially when you think about like, the biggest thing that people forget is drift cars, they don't see any airflow because we're going sideways the whole time. So if you took a drag car or like a street car that makes 1500 horsepower and ran it sideways at red line for two minutes straight. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. Super cool. Is that a carbon nitrous bottle? Yep. That's super cool. And as well, we're not allowed to use any antifreeze or anything like that. Like it's only water and water weather, right? So I think it's even more impressive for them. Uh, and we don't run a traditional winter is the same as everyone else. I actually run a speedway differential in mine. Yeah, I noticed it's a bit different. What's uh, the reason for that? Because the mounting location just helps our packaging better. And uh, the old guy that owns the company is a really good friend of mine. So that's what we use. I never noticed uh, the Vipers are all fiberglass. Yeah. For whatever reason, I thought that they were metal. So that's kind of cool. Now, is this, the, is this the same chassis that we crashed into each other in Texas? That is. I was just actually admiring my hole in the side of your car. Yeah, if you yeah. know anyone that can pull a dent out of my... Uh, what would that even I'm sorry be? Sorry about that. My sill? Yeah, the that's... sill, side rocker. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a bad one. It's pretty smoked. I'm sorry about that. I kind of feel guilty, actually. Yeah, it's such a nice car. It happens. I'll return the favor one day, hopefully I'm sure. I'm hopefully sure. not soon or on purpose, but <laughs> it's part of drifting. But yeah, this car was a, originally a Gen 4 car, um, and the chassis are almost identical with the new chassis. So in our contract for last year, we had to run a Gen 5 car, and the bodywork I was after purchasing was not after showing up in time. So uh, two weeks before FD, I bought a car off a of co-part, took off all the bodywork and put it onto this car. That's sick. Yeah. So right, let's uh, let's look inside. What you got going on in here? So we're gonna get down low. Yeah. All right. Samsonis gearbox. Samsonis gearbox. Zicky e-brake. Otec keypad and a Elwood pedal box. Um, super simple. I like a car to be really, really basic. If it's not needed, it wouldn't be there. But yeah, and it's clean and as much carbon as I was able to get in there. Is uh, that all custom stuff or is that? Yeah, that uh, we got the dashes made. They're actually Gen Three dashes. Now, is that tunnel the factory height or is... That is the factory height, yeah. That's yeah. high. Yeah, it's really high. Actually, get in and, and and see what way you are with your elbow on it. Yeah. that The biggest thing that I want to know, I want to have you close the hood and see visibility. Because this thing looks like the hood's so long. Do you it have a hard time long. like seeing clips? Um, At the start, I did. But like this time as every pro car, after a time, you start... Uh, Kind of actually knowing where every part of your car is, right? Yeah, honestly, like you, if you don't know where the clip is, you like a hundred feet FD. before the yeah. clip, <laughs> then you're probably not going to hit it anyway. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see the elbow thing. Yeah, so it's turned me actually more into a driver like this now than I used to be like this. So. Yeah, that's super cool. I like it. Nice and tidy, simple. Yep, I'll uh, put down the hood, and you'll get to see kind of how far away it is. We uh, we joked about uh, with the RTR Mustangs because they also have long front ends that are hard to see over the hood, putting like JDM parking poles on the front bumper. That way we can kind of see the proximity to clips because we'll call our spotters and be like, hey, was I a foot off? Was I 30 feet off? 
I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bit wild. Yeah, it's a long way away. I'm up. Yeah, I'd be mowing some people over for sure. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So uh, Dean is kind enough to offer me the keys, or I should say keypad, to take a spin in this thing. I think I want to have you drive it first, though, since it's a fresh motor and let her eat. Yeah. yeah. Put on a show. Hopefully I don't break it first, right? It's, it's better to break here. I'd rather it break here, honestly. Than at New Jersey, because the thing is, he breaks it here, he gets to hang out longer, a nice air-conditioned shop friends and it's a really cool place honestly oh, i appreciate it i've actually really enjoyed being here uh, i've hanging out like online now for two years and like really should go by adam's place sometime but unfortunately this was the circumstances i had to come by <laughs> hey we've been able to hang out a bit now yeah. we're gonna get to go do some viper laps at the compound in the swamp so there is a handle up here to pull yourself up and put your butt on the door and then um... you need instructions how to get out of these things <laughs> we'll catch you doing some laps Before we go take this thing for rip, I want to remind you that from street cars to show cars to pro cars, we got you covered. We've got insanely knowledgeable staff, a ton of parts on the shelf. If you're building something like this, or if you're just building something to tinker with on your way to work, we got the parts. We'd love to have your business. DriftHQ.com, you know where to go. I'm actually like proper excited. I think this is one of the coolest sounding cars in FD. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's different as well, right? It's weird because the Viper is like such an American car, but I don't think of it as an American car. No, I'm the same. And like, it kind of already doesn't know what it is like it's not a supercar yeah and it's not really a corvette right i think it's it's like one tier above a corvette yeah all right all right do your uh, best i'll just drive around it first and just uh see it and then yeah i know you've go. been hanging out enough to where you probably know the layout but we'll make sure we're good <laughs> drive it later out turn on the nitrous dude it makes a crazy difference and this is on the lowest boost setting this yeah. is only on six pounds that's six pounds <laughs> what is this like 800 wheel uh it's six pounds 935 ish so crazy at the tire <laughs> and it still feels so responsive yeah hell yeah dude with the nitrous is fucking <laughs> about going backwards so take the tight way in so tight way and then come actually back out yeah because when you come back out you can hit the drop on power and it'll and it'll pick the front end up a lot more instead of being off throttle and floating so that's the problem with this car if you're off throttle and you're on full lock it sticks on full lock oh wow yeah like like that's one thing we're still trying to like get fucking perfect on yeah, it yeah yeah uh, i'll just check the tires you know yeah but no try that backwards on the other way it'll it'll be a lot of fun yeah. hey that's cool isn't it dude it's so good I love this car. I knew it was going to be good, but I just can't believe how smooth it is. Let's 
going on in front? I got my own custom parking poles. I should put up a clipping point just so I can make use of them. Yeah, I figured that you probably wouldn't know where the front is, but you know here very well, so you'll try to get like aggressive on the inside. He's worried because he knows how many trees there are that I was probably going to take off his front very expensive car. I gave it. Uh, I gave. Ooh, this look at that. APR. I've driving this before. Um, who's a relative heavily good driver and there was a wall on the inside and they thought they were like three feet away from it and they were like this far. This is how much you trust me. <laughs> no, it's not that I don't trust you. I've never ridden in this car passenger. Never ridden in a passenger? Ever! Wow. Let's do it! Do it! It's broken! How did I break it that soon? It seems like your drive shaft is broke. Wow. <laughs> I've Did I do something that. wrong? It sounds like a drive shaft. Yeah. I feel like I I was just warming up the front tires. <laughs> I swear the clutch was in when I handbraked. Maybe not all the way, no? Sorry? Was the clutch in all the way? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I mean, it was probably destined to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think the drive shaft broke. It sounded like the drive shaft to me. That's a drive shaft. It was about. That's a drive shaft? Drive shaft. Has that ever happened? No. Never ever. I don't think I did anything crazy. I'm sure in FD you got more grip. I, uh. I'm normally not as aggressive on the car if, I, if I'm turning it around. It's like throttle everything, no like that touch dump on it, really. I was just doing the warm up. I don't know, bud. Always breaking. <laughs> I feel so bad. Oh man, that <laughs> snapped. Wow. It's probably the cheapest it's thing we could break. Oh, honestly? Oh my on god. The That's, look. Where is it? Oh, that. Thankfully, the boys have a spare drive shaft, shortest drive shaft in the world. I'm gonna toss it on and I'll, I'm gonna still get to do my Viper laps. I was gonna probably cry tonight. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not, not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> I'm ready. grip and it's very um it feels like it's got a lot of self-steer like it like it, it uh, a lot of self-steer yeah like you don't have to do a lot of wheel work it does a lot of stuff on its own so so actually i drive with the pedals completely i don't even use the steering wheel i just completely pedal drive yeah that's crazy yeah it's got so much grip and we use like no tire it's got loads of forward i reckon i might have enough for another lap yeah of course absolutely actually to be honest that was pretty good thanks for dude first ever try how are the poles out the front? Oh, dude, if I didn't have those, it probably would have been bad. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, those are actually kind of necessary. <laughs> it's, uh, it's got a really long front, front, and no one ever really understands it, like, until they sit in the driver's seat. And then you're like, holy shit. 
Dude, the, honestly, the gearing might even be a little bit long for the compound. Oh, it's, it's way long. Yeah, because I'm just like, dude, if I'm floored in second, I'm going to be chooching. <laughs> Hell yeah. Really long. All right, let me do another. <laughs> Shit, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, fast, come on. It's so good. Dude, this is like this is one of the craziest drift cars I think I've ever driven. Is everything okay? Yeah. Woo! Good? Dude, this thing's nuts. It's cool, isn't it? It's got so much forward. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Holy I... fing props for driving this thing the way you do. Like the shocks at the moment are like on like friendly mode as we call it right now you know dude this thing's a caged animal <laughs> it's fucking wild dude yeah. thank you so much absolutely honestly i was really really impressed thank you. like really impressed thanks dude like honestly you know way better than anyone else has ever driven it like on their first try well, i appreciate it and it is a little scary too because i am driving your car in the middle of the season in between trees it's okay i trust you <laughs> It's okay, I trust so, it. But it goes through my head. I'm like, man, if I fuck up, I got a lot of work to do to help him fix it. It's okay. You just have to get your welder out and fix the drive shaft. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, dude. This is really cool. Absolutely, man. I Thank you. It. All right, so Drift HQ is going to be building multiple Vipers now because this thing is fucking absurd. So the cheapest way of doing this easier is uh, build a Honda S2000. It feels the exact same, just a little bit smaller. Yeah, but it doesn't have the freaking engine that sounds so fucking cool, dude. Yeah, just put one of those motors in it. It's good. Actually, if you put in like an LS, it's kind of the same thing, right? Except it doesn't sound as good. Oh, anyway, absolutely. if you want if to you check want more about Dean and his program, we will put his links, his socials up on the screen right now. You can check it out in the description. He's got a YouTube video coming up from today and I know yep. a lot of your adventures. Thank you again, dude. This was amazing. Absolutely. And thank you very much for having us here. I really, really appreciate it. Of course, dude. And uh, we'll be stopping back in next year, if you don't mind. Hopefully for a good reason, not a bad one. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Absolutely, man. That was amazing. If I I'll don't see, see you. Yes, it's great absolutely. Do. Uh, if not, we'll see you in three weeks. Sounds good.